Hello everybody, today I'm going to be doing a logo history video, and you know you've read the title, it's going to be Universal Pictures. So, let's just get straight on into the logos. Also, thank you very much for more than 100 subscribers. It really means a lot to me that you guys are supporting my channel. Anyways, let's get into the first logo. It's called the Saturn Globe. And it was used from 1913 to 1918, but it has not been confirmed yet. And I have three variants. One of them is the regular variant in black and white. The second one is where the globe looks different and the words Universal Films are not superimposed over the globe, but is rather a model. And the third variant I have is one where under the words Universal Films, there's something that says Nestor. Overall, I think this is a very nice logo, especially considering the time it was made. It was 1910, the early 1910s. And it looks very nice, even though it has pretty choppy animation. But, other film companies from that time had almost no animation. So, you gotta give it some credits, you know? The second logo is called the Transatlantic Globe. And it was used from 1914 until 1919. There is a sepia-toned version, but I do not have footage of it. Only the black and white version. <laughs> I, to be honest, think this is a step down from the first logo. It has no animation, it's just a pretty weird looking globe. But other than that, it's not that good of a logo compared to the first one though. The third logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the Print Saturn Globe. And it was used from 1920 to 1922. This is actually a step up from the previous logo because the globe looks better, the text is more easy to read except for the Pacific Coast Studios, and it looks nice. The fourth logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the Biplane and it was used from 1922 until 1927. Honestly, I think it's a pretty nice logo, even though it has a chop very choppy animation. It's good for the time because it was the early 1920s. And other film logos from that time were a little bit worse. Not that much, but it was pretty standard for the time. The fifth logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the Carl Lamel Globe. And it was used from 1925 to approximately 1927. This is a pretty good logo for its time. It's the mid nineteen twenties. It has a pretty nice globe, and we get to see the owner of the company, so that's nice, but it has some not that great animation, though. The sixth logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the Biplane 2, and it was used from 1927 to 1936. I have three variants to show you. One of them is the opening variant, and the other two are closing variants.
This is a very good logo for its time, especially considering it's the late 1920s. It has very good animation and a very good logo in general. So I applaud them. The seventh logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the Art Deco Globe, and it was used from 1936 to 1946 for 10 years. I have two variants to show you. One of them is a black and white variant, and the other one is a colored variant. very stylish logo for its time and it has a very nice fanfare and that's all I have to say for this logo it's a very nice logo for its time the eighth logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the Universal International Globe and it was used from 1946 to 1964 and I have three variants to show you one of them is a black and white variant the other one is a black and white variant that says this released by General Film Distributors Limited and the third one is a color variant. <laughs> a nice logo for the 1940s but it does have very little animation but other than that is a very nice logo the ninth logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the gaseous globe and it was used from 1963 until 1990 I have two variants to show you and they're both in color This is a nice logo for the 1960s, but wow, this was used for a long time. It was used for more than 20 years. So it was a very popular logo for the time. The 10th logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the 75th Anniversary, and it was used from 1990 until 1997. And as you guessed, it was for the 75th Anniversary. I have two variants. One of them is obviously the 75th anniversary variant, and the second one is variants that were used for the time period that it was in the anniversary. Very nice CGI for the time, but the colors look too dull, in my opinion. Other than that, it's a very nice logo for the 1990s. The 11th logo that we're going to be looking at today is called 
the 2000s globe, and it was used from 1997 until 2012. <laughs> What a whopper of a logo. It's very nice. I just have to ask a question. Why are the continents colored this way? It's like the lower parts of the continents are red and the upper ones are green. That looks weird. But it has very nice animation. Especially for the early 2000s. The final logo that we're going to be looking at today is called the 100th Anniversary Globe. And it's been in use since 2012. And I have two variants. One of them is the 100th anniversary variant, and the second one is just a generalized variant. What a big logo. Big in style. It's a very nice logo. And the globe looks very realistic. And the CGI is just beautiful. What a nice logo to end this video off with. Thank you for watching this one of a kind logo history video. This was on Universal Studios. And I just hope you guys enjoyed it. Goodbye.